Arab Tov covering. My name is Stephen Benoun. You're watching Israeli News Live this evening. An opinion piece about this latest news about an Iranian oil tanker on fire. Uh, China doing the rescue efforts. 32 of the sailors are missing that were aboard the uh, Iranian ship that was bound for South Korea. Now, this is a a crude, an oil tanker that was headed there, massive amounts of oil upon this ship. They say as much as what the Valdez oil spill was carrying. And I am wondering if China is not colluding with North Korea and that the move may have actually been intentional to try to slow down the the uh, war machine that the United States is working with South Korea in preparations for a possible war with North Korea is in fact China colluding with the North Koreans and that's what we're looking at right now and it really seems to appear this way friends got to look at what the article says here let me kind of blow up the print for you uh, according to this, Beijing, a tanker carrying Iranian oil and run by the country's top oil shipping operators was ablaze and spewing cargo into the East China Sea yesterday after colliding with a Chinese bulk ship leaving its 32 crew members missing. The Chinese government said this cloud of dark smoke could be seen billowing out of the Sanchi tanker engulfing the vessel. A rescue efforts were hampered by bad weather and, and fire on and around the ship. Mr. Mohammad Rastad, head of the Iran's port of maritime organizations told Iranian television. Now, again, I am seriously wondering about the, uh, the collusion of the Chinese government, the military there with North Korea. Are they trying to hamper the efforts of South Korea and the United States military uh, operating there with South Korea in the event of a possible strike? Is China prepared and is this a military move? What is actually going on? I mean, this has really got me concerned right here. Let's take a look at some of the reasons why we would think of this much of a provocation here. Top secret Chinese plan leaked to offer North Korea illegal missiles and aid, says a report. This was coming out. Uh, and let me again blow up the print for you guys here. It says Ch uh, China secretly planned to provide North Korea with increased aid and missiles in exchange for Pyongyang to halt any further nuclear tests. Not even abandoning uh, the nuclear arms, but don't just do no more tests. According to the secret document obtained by the Washington Free Beacon, the top secret document obtained by the Free Beacon from a person who had ties to the Chinese intelligence and security communities detailed a plan to deal with North Korea's nuclear threat by allowing them to keep their nuclear arsenal despite having a public stance that calls for denuclearization North Korea. The document calls into question whether there is an opposition to the Supreme Leader Xi Jinping and the Chinese government. Now, that's not the only issue here, though. Look right here. We have on the Conservative Tribune, Chinese military headed towards Korea border as residents are warned to prepare for war. We shared that with you recently, that video there that they're showing on here where Xi Jinping... Let's drop it because it's not going to stop the broadcast here. President Xi Jinping was letting his military know to be prepared in all aspects of war. Then, of course, President Trump did this tweet here uh, back on December the 28th, caught red-handed, very disappointed that China is allowing oil to go into North Korea. There will never be a friendly solution to the North Korean problem if this uh, continues to happen. Now, notice that China allows the oil to go into North Korea, but in this case right here, well, a Chinese ship rams into this freighter here, stopping the oil going into South Korea. You can't help but wonder, friends, what's really going on. How the U.S. and North Korea could stumble into World War III. This article here states right here in Politico. Uh, and that's just from the very tweets themselves. What about over here? North Korea warning Kim Jong-un only one tantrum away from sparking World War III. Uh, that's according to Gordon Chang. When North Korea throws a tantrum, sometimes people die. Uh, that was his own political uh, analyst uh, analytics there in regards to this. So I'm watching this, wondering, even though we know that there are supposed to be talks between South Korea and North Korea on Tuesday there, what are these moves that are going on? Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe there's nothing to this. Maybe it's just all... Uh, just a little bit too hyped up. I don't know, but it just seems a bit strange. North Korea gets their oil, 
South Korea doesn't get theirs. You know, the one thing, one key uh, ingredient when you're dealing with a war is to cut the supply line, cut the oil, cut the oil that makes gas, it makes fuel for jets and, and, and for tanks and everything else. Cut that supply there before the war starts. It's kind of like what we see with the destabilization with uh, unrest and, and, and protests and things like that. What, we're seeing, this is what we saw over in Egypt and in Benghazi, the Arab Spring, what we saw in Syria before the civil war that began there, what we're seeing in Iran right now, uh, the protests that are going on nationwide. All these type things normally happen before a war. Why? It's to destabilize the nation. It's to begin something else, something kind of counter-revolution there to kind of maybe uh, use that avenue for a pretext of war. But in a case when it comes to North Korea, we have a massive amount of military over in the region there and of course we are there in support of South Korea uh, as well as the United States and Japan and the uh, U.S.'s own interests there. So could it be that the Chinese who are also very much prepared for war, nor, uh, Russia is prepared for war, could this have actually been provocative, done intentionally as a war strategic move on China's part? I don't know. You think about that yourself. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Arab Tov. Tomorrow, part one, with this uh, interesting meeting we had with Dr. Stephen Pigeon. I did load part uh, two first. Don't worry about it. It's actually kind of a different topic altogether we discussed in part two. Uh, so it doesn't really matter which one's part one or part two. But anyway, I'm Stephen Benoom. Shalom and Erev Tov.